Hi everyone, Emily here. Today I want to show you how to do a Georgia O'Keeffe inspired landscape. So it's going to be mountain, it's going to be really cool. We're going to be using watery paint, but you could pretty much use anything. But it's nice to use watery paint to get the effect. Subscribe and support my channel, that would be amazing. I am going to show you, this is Georgia O'Keeffe, that's her name. <laughs> and she was American and she was born 80... I've got to look 1887 and died 1986 so just write that down if you can because it's always quite nice to remember I'll just tell you a little bit about her she painted enlarged flowers so really big flowers she did New York skyscrapers and New Mexico landscapes and she was also known as the mother Ooh. It's very warm in here today. She was known as the mother of American modernism. So if you've not caught all of the writing, just pause the video and then write it down. Because I love writing it on the back and then doing my artwork. So I'm going to show you some pictures that she's done. This is the one that I'm concentrating on. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? So this one is a picture that she did. So it's more buildings based. I think it's called the white trumpet flower. I don't think it is a lily if I'm honest, it's a white trumpet flower. Then we've got, you probably recognise these, poppies and it's called oriental poppies. We've got this one here, yellow colour, I think it's called. Beautiful isn't it, I really like that one. This one's kind of cool, it's a tree and it's called dead cottonwood tree. So they always look, they look quite photogenic, don't they? Like photos. This one's just the close-up of a flower, like a tulip. But I love it because of all the all the colours. And you could almost turn it over, and it could be something else. It could be like um, a really cool kind of fiery picture, or it could be like a landscape. So we're going to do something that looks like mountains. Mountains. I just have to find my pen amongst all of my stuff that's fallen on the floor. Right. I am going to do landscape paper pencil draw it with a pencil and if you want to you can go over with a pen that's always quite a nice way of doing it i would pretty much recommend drawing over with a felt tip because it's quite fun to watch it drip the ink right so all we're going to need horizon line none of this needs to be straight so don't even worry and then we're going to go out touch there go out all of it's wobbly because it's a landscape Think of, yeah, <laughs> I thought, have I gone too far with the picture? And then wobbly. This is like my variation of it, so it's not the exact copy, and it doesn't need to be. So just think lines, a lot of lines. Her work was all about different lines and colours, beautiful bright colours. Big mountain, another one, another one. Look how simple that is to draw, really, really simple. And then we're going to do big trees. We're just going to do them bobbly. Big bobble, bobbles, bobbles, bobbles. Now there's a reflection, so you just go down and just do whatever there is, but the reflection to copy it. Right, now we're going to paint it. So we want brushes, water and any paint. Watercolour paint's a really good one to use for this one. I'm going to use this type of brush because I really like this brush. And I'm going to start off with wetting the paper. Now I'm doing it in my own way if I'm completely honest with you. So I'm just going to wet the bottom of the paper. So you might need a big brush for this. I'm doing a variation of her style, so I'm not going to do exactly what she's done. So the first colour was blue. So because I've wet the paper and I've put blue, it is literally going to drip. But just remember, it's inspired by. It's not the exact representation of her copy of her work. I don't know if you can see, but it... Oh, I think I got it also. It absorbs the paint, so it looks kind of cool. Remember, if it's a reflection, that's going to be reflecting as well. So we're just going to do... I'm not going to put water on this bit, because it's not the reflection bit. So I'm going to put a bit of blue, dip it in the water, 
I'm gonna make a purple, so blue and red. And I'm just gonna put blue purple there. And I want it to be quite ready, so I'm gonna add a little bit of red. I really like the bright colour she uses, so we want to try and mix them in. Now, what I'm doing is each time I want to mix each colour together, I dip it in the water, I sometimes dry it, and then just squish the edges. So it's like your, it's your blending, basically. It's quite a nice way of doing it. Now, let's try... There's a black there, isn't there? Let's do a black, because there's a white that I forgot, and it's just here. So I'm going to draw a line. You probably can't see it, so I'm going to paint it in. This is my black line. Whoa. You need a smaller brush when you get to the end, because mine's, like, way big. <laughs> right, then she has this awesome way of... of um, doing colours that makes it look awesome. Awesome. I'm just gonna get red. I want a red, 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 red. A pink's quite nice, so you could get like a pinky red. Now I'm just gonna do here. I'm gonna let mine drip because this is water and this is already wet. So it's quite a nice way of. So I've made this wet. Can you see what's happening there? I love it. I love it. So you put water. Put the pink on and it bleeds down it, it it kind of drips down it's kind of cool here was dry so i'm just going to get water on its own got to keep rinsing out for this one you could do this with chalk so you don't have to do paint you could just color it all in nicely with chalk so you could get dark blue chalk light blue chalk and smudge that would look incredible so you could give that a go it doesn't have to be these colors does it my red's not looking good right now. I'm going to do a bit of red there, look at that cool red. I don't want the top to drip, I just want the bottom because it's the reflection. Can you see how water on my brush is now smudging it down? So it blends it down on the top, it's kind of cool. I'm going to make a nice purple. Let's make a purple, guys. I'm going to make a dark purple, so blue and red. And if it's dark, you want more blue than red. Put some there. I'm trying to copy the picture, so bear with. It's a bit of purple there, I'd forgot about. Whoops. There's some red there. Let's do some purple there, why not? <laughs> Changed it up slightly. Quite like that. Now, rinsed out. Every time you can hear me go, I've rinsed out. <laughs> so now I'm blending. So I'm doing this. I'm touching the edges. And I'm just smoothing it down. I really personally like the drip. So I touch myself and I've got loads of water and <laughs> paint on this. I've got to be super careful not to touch my clothes. Now, this is an awesome colour. We want to do a green. So find a green that looks amazing. I've got this green here, I'll show you. It's like this type of green. But it doesn't really matter as long as you've got a nice green. Let's have a go gonna put it all here it's like a bluey green because I've mixed it with a bit of blue right can you see how rough I've done that then get the brush rinse out still got the water and then I blend the edges in depends what paper you have because you don't want to make a hole in skinny paper like tiny paper like thin paper but you should be all right this one's quite thin to be honest this paper and it still looks fine now, if you've blended it too much, I can put some more on top. So I'm putting a dark bluey green here. And then again, to blend it in, rinse. Da -da -da. It takes a bit of doing to do this, like it takes a bit of time, but it's worth it. And it's a nice technique to try as well. Like here, I can let it drip. I'm gonna let it drip more. I would definitely give chalk a go. Like I could do chalk over this as well. What's really nice is having um, the background, not having the background, it's having the black lines because I think that really helps. Now the trees, I'm just gonna do 
this is like a super quick picture so it's not something that needs to take forever but you can change it to what you want so you could decide that oh do you know what I've done that I'm gonna let it dry then I'm gonna go over it with chalk which would be amazing just to let you know <laughs> I'll show you if it dries in time now I'm just choosing her colors but you can do any colors I think that's what's nice about looking at an artist piece of work because you don't have to copy exactly what she's done you can use what you like from what she's done and you can do your own now I do you want to get that dripping come on guys drip away so what this really is is this is the top of the mountain and that's the reflection in the water so you could just carry on and do the whole thing like you could color all that blue if you like I feel like this needs to be darker for me. It's always nice to have a darker top bit and then it blends into nothingness. That's always nice. So I'm just creating dark bits. But as I say, you can do it with chalk, which looks really nice. I almost want to show you what I mean. What I could do is once I've done the, the uh, mountain, <laughs> oh, just move my chair. Once I've done the mountain, this is wet, so it might look a bit strange when I do it, but you could think, right, I'm going to do a really cool sunset, so I'm going to start off with, right, I'm going to show you what I would do. I like the idea of a pink, so I would start off with, because all her paintings were so bright, well, most of them were quite bright, and they were quite eye-catching, so it's quite fun to do something like that. Let this dry if you do do paint and then you want to do chalk because otherwise it's messy. Right, look at this awesome colour. It's like um, a fluorescent. So I'm going to do this for my sky. What goes with that, do you think? Quite like the idea of blue, if I'm honest. Uh, do you know what? I'm going to go purple. Do you know what, I like this purple here. It's like a bluey purple. So, once you've done that, because this sky could be anything, you could do a green sky, you could do a black sky, you're gonna blend it in. Now remember, I'm doing this like ridiculously fast and there's no point to do it fast, apart from I want to show you what it looks like quickly so you can see. But what you want to do is take your time on your one. And mixed media is great. So paint, chalk, watercolour pencils, whatever you like. Can you see how vibrant the sky looks? It looks lovely. And then once this is dry, say for example the green is not yet dry. Nah, could be a bit more drier. I could get green chalk. And I could work over the top of the paint. It's a bit tricky to be honest because it's still wet. <laughs> it's still so wet. But what's nice about that is it gives it texture. So if you want to add texture to your picture, you could just go around it. It looks awesome. I think the brighter the better, you know. And then that blue, I'd love to colour in, but it's wet so I can't. <laughs> But what's really nice as well is once it's all dry and you haven't got the chalk on there, outline it with black, maybe pencil or marker, then you can go over with chalk. So you could paint the lines in, I feel. Oh, I really want that to be dry so I can show you. It's not gonna be there, is it? <laughs> so there we are, There's, there is my landscape. So it's a mountain landscape in the style of Georges O'Keeffe. The more you add, the better it's going to look. So mine's wet at the moment. So I'm just going to add details where it's kind of drying. So the trees could be light on the top, dark at the bottom when you do them. So detail really counts, I think, with this one. Because it's such a simple picture, you want a bit of detail in there, you know. Blue is really nice, isn't it? You can add a bit of blue in there, but as I say, it's wet still. But just think about how you could make these look amazing, the colours. But that could be blue here. And you could blend that. That would be amazing. I like the way it's kind of rough. You know, it looks rough. Like there's 
some type of surface to it that's quite rough looking it looks quite cool that would stay white so we could outline that oh it's so wet isn't it <laughs> whoops yours won't be wet so you'll be fine there we go quite liking that I'm quite in enjoying that you can go over oh look at that black how cool that black is so dark, wicked. Hmm. I'm gonna outline the black because it really gives it, it really sets off the colour. Oh, I love that. So this ultimately is inspired by Georgia O'Keeffe's painting, but it's not the direct copy and I quite like that because it's nice to try and do your own thing but to also use her painting as reference I'm just going to go around the tree I'm doing black chalk for this just because it's easier for me because I've got it near me and it works quite well I think there we go there's my Georgia O'Keeffe inspired landscape have a go at using the techniques because it's really nice to use them. I'm just going to draw because you've got to soften the black line. So I'm just going to draw over the black line as though I'm taking my finger for a walk. It makes everything look smoother. There we go. There is my picture. Now at the bottom you can colour it in blue or you could colour it in... I don't know what I'd colour it in quite like the idea of a purpley. Just looking at my screen now. I'd probably go for a bit of a purple. It's funny, isn't it? The more you experiment, the more you think, oh, what well, that way I do that. <laughs> That's how I managed to get my style of painting. I just experimented and it's quite fun to do that. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at the picture. Okay. Right, I think I'm, I am done. <laughs> so you wanna sign your name, which I can't do because it's still wet. <laughs> and voila, there we are. Let me know how you get on with your Giorgio, I can't say, Giorgio O'Keefe inspired landscape of New Mexico. Enjoy and I'll see you soon. Bye.